Right, okay. Um, it's okay. Um, so, once you've arranged everything how you want it, you can then use a little bit of pastel to draw the outline. So, I would just start by making some very fine marks. I've got the top of the jug, so you always start with the tallest object. And then I've got this jug here in relation to it. And then I've got the scarf there. And you just start making a few simple marks like that. So you're getting the height of the objects and then you'll start getting the width of the objects. So I've got the whole of that vase and that jug, which probably doesn't look like it makes much sense at the moment, but it does in my mind. And then you can start to get a rough outline. Don't worry too much about details or being perfect at this point because you are going to add much more detail in your pastels later. This outline is a rough outline for you to add that dog <laughs> every time. This outline is a rough outline for you to add your... <laughs> for you to know where to add your underpainting and the underpainting you know that's that's don't worry about it too much it's just to give a flavor of color coming through um but you can change bits of your underpainting by um coating it with your your pastel as well so if you're not happy with the underpainting that is not the be all and end all of the picture is what i'm trying to say um, so once you've got a very rough sort of outline, that's when you can start to add your watercolour over the top and it is just a flat wash. So using a larger brush, um, that seems quite stiff. <laughs> EVA on it. I don't know what it's had on it, but it's really, I oh know it's okay. It's it's all right. And then think about what undertone do you want? Do you want a warm undertone? And um, sometimes artists choose a completely different color to what you actually see. So rather than blue for the jug and red for this one, because this one has hints of yellow underneath and coming through, I might choose to put a very bright yellow on that one to give it that really warm undertone. And as I say, it's just a flat wash. Your um, soft pastel markings might blend in a little bit. You can also rub them out if you want to, if you're worried about them. Obviously, I've used dark black, so that is quite dark. So but it's just so you can see easily on the video, but you might want to use a lighter colour. And then for this one, I'm actually quite tempted to use a warm one again because I know there's some cool bits here, but there's a lot of yellow. I might separate it actually. I might do warm on this side and then a cooler colour on the other side. It's really a good artist. <laughs> <laughs> Not even trying. <laughs> Are you still using pastel paper? Yeah, still using pastel paper, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which not many people think, oh, you could use watercolours on pastel paper. You can't really use any thicker paints on pastel paper, um, like acrylic, not, well, not traditionally anyway, because um, they say to avoid it because of the grain, but because watercolour is so watery, you don't get that grainy effect on it, which is quite nice. Um, I am going to go for quite a neutral colour for the scarf and it's just literally coating it. Obviously the black is blending in quite a bit, but as I say, you can use a lighter colour or you can rub it out a bit so you can just see the bare minimum to know where to guide you. And now that has, a lot of that has dried very quick. You can still see that this is a bit wet here. But I've brought my hair dry with me so you can dry it. But before I finish painting it, just for the purposes of demonstration, I'm going to show you how to start working into it now with pastel. So I'm choosing my colours very wisely. I'm looking at the effect on here. And I'm actually going to break this up a little bit. 
so that I can get a bit more of a jagged edge. And then I'm gonna kind of do a little bit of a twisting and tapping to get some of that pattern on there. And this is just suggesting that pattern. I'd never be able to draw all of that. Um, but just by manipulating this and not kind of worrying about being too perfect. And then I'll probably use my blending tool as well, just so it doesn't look too harsh. And I might start to drag down on some bits because that pattern looks like it's, it's coming down a little bit as well. So you can use your blending tool, but I think, I, I personally think the best way to use a blending tool is sparingly. So not to use it on everything, but just to kind of use it on, on some, because if you use it on everything, it just looks too over soft and over blended. So that just gives a bit of an indication of that pattern there. With the scarf and with other patterns on the scarves, you know, obviously don't attempt to draw the whole thing. What were you going to say? You said it's shadow. Shadow, yeah. Um, so with drapes, it's a beautiful thing to draw drapes. And I, it's one of my favourite things to draw personally is to draw drapes because you are thinking about the shadows within them and looking at the kind of negative shapes that the shadows create. So those lovely shapes in there and it's all about shadow and highlights as well so looking at where the lightest areas are and the darkest areas are and remember to help you with this you can half close your eyes so you can see where the highlights are and where the darkest bits are because half closing your eyes will really help you to see the very lightest parts and the very darkest parts so you can put in all your highlights and then you can put in all your shadows. Probably would start with the highlights, to be fair. And if you think about a curve, you always have, you know, a high highlight raise point and then a shadow underneath. So just think about that when you shade in. I wouldn't just kind of put highlights and shadows. I'd then work back into it with, and I might have to mix colours here because I do not have a peachy colour that's right for this. Probably the closest, that one. Um, we would then want to mix them together so that they blend more naturally so it doesn't look quite as extreme. And again, you could use a little bit of a blending tool there as well. Or you could even use your finger with that because it's quite a bigger area so you don't need to be quite as precise as well. With things like the tassels here and the actual pattern on the scarves, you're never going to be able to draw the whole thing. So you just want to sort of suggest it. So again, with this here and um, with the tassels, I break my pastel and I just try to suggest it. And I might kind of do it in different directions like that to just suggest that there's a pattern there. And there's a bit more of a pattern over there as well. So think about using your pastels in different directions. Think about breaking them up. Think about suggesting pattern. Think about showing highlights and dark tones. And yeah, it's just, just building it up like that, really. So that's it, unless there's any questions.